Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave podcast. We are back this time to discuss the first two episodes of the HBO drama uh, and might be limited series of DC's The Penguin. This is a continuation of Matt Reeves' The Batverse. Um, the Batman came out a few years ago, which introduced everybody to Colin Farrell's version of The Penguin, and this is a limited series. That's going to kind of take place right after the events of the Batman. So I'm going to be discussing this. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I'm going to be one of your hosts. I am also with Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. And we're going to be covering this show with you guys through the remainder of the series. Uh, and we might have our buddy Zach Miller on here as well for some of these episodes with us as well. Um, we are we apologize we weren't able to do the episode last week, but we're here. We're going to try to do our best to keep it short and sweet, but also discuss what we've seen so far in the first two episodes of The Penguin. Um <clears throat> so if you guys are not familiar, Vinny and I are both big fans of the Batman, Matt mm. Reeves's version of um, the caped crusader that sort of came on screen. I believe it was 2022, right? When yep. that film released. 2022. Yep. So the coolest thing with that movie was that it felt like it was like Batman in like in the vein of David Fincher. And it was very mm. much a detective story, but my favorite thing about that movie above all else was the fact that he was able to design Gotham as a character. Again, we finally got to see Gotham really be yeah. exemplified on screen in a way that was unique, that was individualized. And I'm a big fan of the Nolan movies, but I do think that Gotham kind of gets shafted a bit in that, in the way that it just gets very modernized and you don't really see Gotham for what it is. Uh, in Reeves's movie and in this show in particular, you're getting the inner workings and the underground of 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 the crime syndicates and and the the atmosphere and the environment of what Gotham really represents and mm -hmm. is emblematic of. Um, and at this time, it's led by Colin Farrell's version of the Penguin, referred to as Oz Cobb, which is a shortened version of Oswald Cobblepot from the comics. Mm. Um, we haven't discussed this yet on the channel, so I'm curious, just in terms of vibe and coming off of the first two episodes of the show, Vinny, how are you feeling about the Penguin? Whew. Okay. Um, I, I to, to just simply put it bluntly, I'm enjoying this. I think that there's a lot of potential, and we're still in the early stages of the series, so it's a lot of setup. Um, it's entertaining setup, and... I could already just tell by the end of this season, by the eighth episode, it's gonna it's gonna explode in a bombastic climax, which I I love to see. It's just every episode thus far. I, there's only been two episodes, but in each episode thus far, it has been really nail biting. They've been really nailing the tension and the dynamics between the characters, and I love to see that. I love to see almost. Uh, it, people online are, are claiming it to be the Sopranos of the Batman universe. Um, I also like to preference that, I mean, you mentioned it before. I'm, I love Batman. Like, I am the huge... I, my keys are over there. But I have a Batman keychain. Everything is Batman. If you walk into my room at home, I'm, I'm still, like, in my five-year-old body. I have Batman all over my walls. I have a cardboard cutout of Batman. I was just listening to The Dark Knight. I was listening to all the Batman soundtracks earlier today. Batman Beyond, uh, main title, Batman. I love Batman. Like, I literally cannot express it enough. It's, he is my hero. Um, but with that, I have a, a, a love for his road gallery and the Penguin. So, I'm interested. Uh, I, I, I like colin's portrayal of the penguin i think it's unique uh without uh you, i mean to put it bluntly without ruining the character but i'm also excited like i said to not only see where the story goes but to see where the penguin goes mm -hmm. you know well i think that that's a big thing with this show too that's unique about it is because so all the other comic book uh, television series or streaming series that we've mm. seen over the years have been like either comic book accurate or is really delving into the nuance of the comic book characters and what they stand for. And um, even something like WandaVision, which was the first Marvel streaming series, it was different than anything Marvel had put out at the time. And it has a lot of great nods to iconic sitcom television and all that kind of stuff. 
but it still felt like it was in the vein of the MCU. Um, but this show, like you had brought up, people are talking about, it's like the Sopranos and the Batman verse. Like this is a dark crime drama. This yeah. is about um, two fam- crime families going to war and Colin Farrell's portrayal of Oz Cobb, which again, he's not, mm. You actually do in the episode two, surprisingly, you get a Penguin reference hmm. where a character calls him Penguin. But I had read before this show had even started that they kind of keep a lot of the comic references really out of the spotlight because they wanted to ground the story. I'm curious your thoughts on that because I love it because I really enjoy my comic book films being grounded. I understand that there are elements – that call for something a little bit more. That's more fun. Like I love the Deadpool movies because they're crazy and they bounce off the walls and that's, he's a fourth wall breaker and that's what the character kind of calls for. You know what I mean? Um, in the MCU, some of my favorite movies in the Marvel cinematic universe are these movies that have more emotional weight, whether that'll be an end game, whether that's a civil war, whether that's uh, a winter soldier, it feels more grounded, even though it's baked in that universe. This is a straight drama and you can tell it right off the bat with how violent we get. We get a naked version of Oz in the first episode. I mean, this is HBO. Hmm. Like this is a different level of, of drama and quality we're, we're kind of going for being such a fan of Batman in the comics. And like, there's been so many different versions of Batman in the past on screen. How do you feel about what they're trying to do with this character in particular? And are you, more intrigued and excited by what Reeves is trying to do? Or are there sensibilities of things that maybe Burton had done or Schumacher had done, or even Nolan had done that you wish would like kind of keep it a little bit more comic accurate for what they're trying to do with, with the, with the uh, bat verse or the Reeves verse. Yeah. That, that's, that's a good to- uh, topic to bring up a uh, good question because there's this, duel there's this war that has been happening in my head for years now and it's been this duality between the the batman fan vinny and the filmmaker vinny and it's like i think they're at wits with each other right now they're like butting heads completely. because uh i mean nearly every day i i swear to god nearly every day i think about how i would do batman uh, but I also really love Matt Reeves take I, uh, the Batman. I'm trying to think of what else came out in 2022. I'm pretty sure that was my favorite film. It's one of my favorite films of all time, mm-hmm. uh, uh, to also say that on a, uh, on most days, it's my favorite Batman film. I'm not going to lie. I, I like it a little bit better than the dark Knight on most days, but Essentially, what I'm trying to get at here is that Matt Reeves and and the creative team involved here on The Penguin, they have a vision for this universe, and I respect it, and I really love the approach. And as a filmmaker, I stand by that, and I respect it, because as long as they're not overstepping and, and ruining what these characters stand for, I think that as long as you keep what these characters mean to not only the story, but the philosophy and and how it's the messages it it delivered to the audience, then you are, you can take it as grounded as you want, or you can take it as fantastical as you want. In this case, they're doing it very grounded. And I respect that. And uh, on that filmmaker side, I, I, I love it. I love it. I think they're doing a great job, an incredible job. Uh, However, however, and this is not to, this is not a fault of this universe um, at all. And I think they should just keep doing what they're doing here and, and not particularly change it. But in the future, in the future, once we're done with, uh, I know Reeves said he wants to do three Batman films and, who knows what will come of this series, if any more series. I will say in the future, I do want a more fantastical take of Batman. I know they're doing Batman Brave and the Bold, which would probably be a more fantastical take. Uh, but yeah, I, I will say, like I said, that duality, the Batman fan, does want a little like 
supernatural element maybe a killer croc maybe a, a clay face yeah, you know? yeah. interesting because i think that the direction and now we're just in a whole discussion of dc yeah. but it's like the whole direction of where they're going to try to go um i mean if you look at it with brave and the bold being announced mm -hmm. and andy muschietti being the one who's doing it like we already have three different batman takes mm -hmm. currently or bat that versus within the umbrella of DC, whether you have Joker now, which we're going to get Joker folly you do, yeah. which uh, that's mm -hmm. most likely going to be the last film that Todd Phillips does. And that follows Joaquin Phoenix's version of the Joker. Um, then you have Matt Reeves's movies where you already have the Batman. The Batman two is coming in 2026. You have the penguin now in season one, there was a Gotham PD show that wasn't in the works from Terrence Winter, who wrote The Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So that is something that's still on the table. They said it's still maybe potentially in development. Mm -hmm. um, there's all these characters he wants to introduce. He wants to do the Court of Owls. We've heard um, Mr. Freeze. Mm -hmm. Joker's already been introduced in his universe in a deleted scene uh, with Barry Keoghan's take. We already have a Riddler mm -hmm. who is not dead. He's just in jail. Um, then there's tons of other characters, like you said, that we haven't even touched yet. Then it was just announced before our recording that they're making a Bane and Deathstroke team up movie that's in development right now. Mm. Does that have anything to do with the Batverse? It probably doesn't. It probably has to do with the other DCU where they're developing another Batman. So it gets very yeah. confusing, especially for casual fans. Um, and it's not to say that I disagree with you because I think you're entitled to your own version. For me, I think it's just so interesting with this series, bringing it back to this, because my only other experience with the Penguin is in Batman Returns, which is a Tim Burton movie. Hmm. And it's Danny DeVito playing like a literal hybrid of a human being and a penguin. Hmm. And that is so polar opposite of what Colin Farrell is trying to do here with the yeah. character. Yeah. And it, I love DeVito's take. Oh, yeah. And I love Farrell's take. So it's it's hard because like for me, it, I just want to see all the different versions of comic book characters that we could possibly crank out because yeah. there's a real interesting element to being able to add realism to these fantastical characters to still make them fit in a world that feels like you would know these. Like Colin Farrell seems like a character that would be in The Sopranos. That's why a lot of people are saying probably what they're saying because mm. – he would act as if he's being like a Bobby Bacala if he went to the dark side. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what he is. And that's what the show is emblematic of. And then you have the real crime elements with Sophia Falcone's character with Kristen Milioti, which I know you definitely wanted to talk about. So we could dive into the series now a little bit more. Yes. Uh, Milioti, when she was cast, I was excited because I've loved everything she's done that I've seen her in. Um, in particular, her episode in Black Mirror, I thought she was so fantastic. Um, and episode two, she actually gets a little bit more time to sort of have these really interesting moments. And you see her origin in, in, in Arkham, or it's a dream sequence, but getting to see her in Arkham with her brother Alberto and see what that has to do with. Like, so your take on her version of Sophia Falcone and just this universe um now that we're in it fully with with the falcons versus the maronis and oz being in the middle of it yeah i really i enjoy i love her performance like colin it, it is incredible but i like knew colin was going to be incredible because he puts on such an incredible performance in the batman so but i was unfamiliar with with anything that christina has done and seeing her in this was i i'm so excited to see more of her and, and and what we've seen in these two episodes is incredible she has such a like graceful psychoticness that is in caps like just just completely enamorating it she puts like it's all in the eyes too she just does such an incredible job of of trying to keep her composure and she does these little head uh, keeping the eyes wide and the head tilts and it is so interesting also to see that she's a mob daughter and uh, but she's also a serial killer in that just came out of arkham asylum and i i think it's such an 
interesting take because kind of going back to the Sopranos uh, comparison, you're literally putting a Batman. Well, I mean, I, well, they're all Batman characters. Yeah, yeah. They're all Batman characters, but I just love it that it's like, she's, she's really bad. You know, she's the serial killer that just came out of Arkham Asylum, and right, it's all, and, and but she's a mom daughter, and it's like the film or the show is treating it as uh, like The Sopranos, you know, to put it simply. Um, but I love that. I love that. I'm so excited to see more of her. I think she just does such a great job, and she's so intimidating. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Yeah, there's that. two. There's the thing I love in episode two where you're seeing her interactions with her therapist, uh, Dr. Julian Rush, who's played by Theo Rossi, who's mm. best known for Sons of Anarchy. But um, she has this moment where she needs this this therapist to sort of bring her back to, to peace and back to Earth. And at the same time, you get also this great moment in this episode where she's with her cousin. And her cousin's like, we should go on a girl's trip trying to be nice. And then all of a sudden her daughter comes into frame and she brings her closer because she's intimidated by who, who Sophia is. Yeah. And, and it, it has this other effect on her brain where she's like, you haven't even seen the beginning of what I can be. Hmm. And then you see it when um, when Penguin happens to put his knife on a different character and she's like, give me the gun, give me the gun. And she wants to go back into yeah. that murderous rage. And I think that uh, there's something so unique about her, and I'm really interested. At the end of the episode, episode two, we get that reveal of of she's kind of in cahoots now with Oz, uh, and I'm so curious to see how that sort of comes to fruition because this show is also about duality and Oz's relationships, which is what I love. Like, I love the, it. Maybe bouncing off the same thing you were kind of saying, I love that this is a show where you don't need Batman. Like you oh, don't yeah. need yeah. Batman to still express Oz's story. And that's part of the reason why, like I know, and I've heard the rumors too about that Reeves only wants to do the three um, movies and that he's going to executive produce whatever shows come and, and Penguin, but I want to live in this universe forever, man. Like there's so mm. many stories that you can tell with this type of stuff. Like I want to see, I'm not even, and I'm not going to lie. I love the Batman too. I actually thought, one of the weaker parts of that film, which a lot of people disagree with, I feel like I'm probably in the minority was I didn't love Dano's take on the Riddler. I liked the imagery. I love the symbolism of what he was. I just didn't love the performance. And I love Paul Dano, but I didn't love the mm -hmm. way that they went with the performance, but I want to see more. Like, I want to see the origin of Dano's character. You know what I mean? Like I'm still intrigued enough to see that. Um, I want to see more like the relationships that Oz have with Sophia with Victor Aguilar and with his mother, Francis mm. are some of the most, it's some of the most compelling television I've seen. And I didn't have a chance to talk about the first episode. Second episode. I enjoyed very much as well. The first episode to me was one of the best pilots I've seen in years, mm. maybe a decade. Like it just set the tone so perfectly for what we were going to get out of this and how it's not going to it's not going to shy away from the fact the show is called the penguin. They're not mm. going to shy away from the fact that this is Oswald Cobblepot, but at the same time we're trying to put you in the reality of this slum. Like we're in a really bad ghetto mm. of Gotham where this crime boss is now dead and his father is dead and it was that was Oz's right hand or Oz was his right hand man and uh you saw that at the end of the Batman. Um and like I said, it, it's great because you don't need Batman to tell this story. What I did think was unique, which I didn't pick up on until the end of this episode, because we get the um, the date reveal on uh, Alberto's gravestone. Hmm. And we had talked about this off camera last time we recorded that Batman Part 2 is supposed to take place during Christmas time. And the, f the f Batman takes place around Halloween time. Hmm. So, like, Alberto dies on November 13th. Hmm. This is all taking place very quickly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. like the, the end, the start of this series is not that long after it might be a day after the Batman, the conclusion of the Batman movie. Hmm. So I'm curious on what you think about that, because we're, we're, we're bound to this capsule of time, at least for the first three projects of what is in this universe. We have the Batman, the first season of the penguin and then the Batman part two is all going to be in successive months. 
So like, there's so much happening and the, the tension is so heightened, but this is only taking like what we've seen in two episodes is maybe a week of time. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is really unique. I, I think it's adding on to that and why I think it's a clever idea and also to why I like the first episode so much same as you is the pacing i think this is the first episode had incredible pacing i think that's why it was such a good episode uh because it just has it, it moves so flawlessly and it has those it sets up emotional connection uh, specifically with oz and his mother oz and his lover uh oz and vic uh, it sets up the conflict in a really bombastic and exciting way. It also has elements of humor. I think one of the funniest parts of the show thus far has been when he's trying to he's trying to get Alberto's body into the bag, and he just he looks at the flight of stairs and just throws Chucks his it. body. It's great. Um, I really have no complaints. Um, aside from, especially in in the second episode. Uh, I don't know about you. But I think some of the dialogue is a little corny sometimes interesting do you have certain moments that stick out to you in terms of the dialogue yeah uh specifically actually right before uh oz kills alberto and they're having that conversation it felt very caricature it felt very like hey you know boss you know i'm the big boss now you know you're talking about uh, alberto's character yeah uh, just kind of a mixture between those that that combo uh it's not a big complaint mm-hmm. i don't think it was it wasn't outlandishly like god this is terrible writing uh but no i just thought like if i were this kind of nitpicking but if i were to find something wrong with this this series thus far is that uh the dialogue sometimes like that i feel very caricaturous very like uh Oh, we're the Italian mom now. You know, we 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 on the big boss. Uh, you know, no one can touch me. You know, it's that type of deal. I I get so. it. I do. I get it. I think it's I think it's unique to his character though too, because I feel like we haven't seen a lot of that. I'm actually happy. Like um, a good example of of the opposite of that. Uh, Michael Kelly is in the show. He plays um. Viti, uh what's his first name johnny johnny Viti, hmm. and michael kelly is like one of our finest character actors he's terrific i don't know if you've seen him in a lot of things he's amazing in in house of cards but um even clancy brown who is going by the name salvatore maroni hmm. which is incredibly italian he still has his booming voice and it doesn't necessarily go over the top with michael zegan's character of alberto i think that it's not only the fact that he is this immature sort of punk, but he's also a drug addict. So I think mm. that there's like, he reminds me of what you've watched Sopranos, right? Yes. Yeah. He's Christopher Moltisanti. Like that is yeah. who he is, but I can understand the, the, um, the gripe with the dialogue and the way that it, I think it's even more, I don't know if it's even the dialogue. It might be more the acting choice mm. just in terms of what he decided to do with it. Um, but I do want to talk to you about in particular, two of the other relationships I brought up, Starting with um, Oz and Vic, hmm. because you had talked earlier too about certain um, elements of the character in the comic that you didn't want them to go away from, like you wanted a fantastical element. I think they do a good job in paying homage. Like Penguin is known for wearing these bright purple suits and carrying around a, a cane and a top hat and a cigar and. That's like he he's very he's very um how could you say like he just seems like a character that would be in the circus like you mm, very just, exuberant exuberant yes. thank you yeah. um and flamboyant like mm. the, that the other versions of penguin have definitely been a lot more flamboyant with this there are nods they do it again in a grounded way so like uh Oz likes to drive around in a bright purple Maserati with gold rims mm. but he corrects people and says it's plum which I love. Yeah. Uh, he walks with a limp, but any which leads to him waddling like a penguin. Um, but it's because of a uh, handicap that he has that he suffered as a child that we don't get a lot of. We might eventually see a flashback or something about how that happened, but it's not that he is a half man, half penguin hybrid that waddles. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I think it's interesting, and he's always chomping on a cigar still by the end of his night, like kind of 
recapping his day and taking care of whatever business affairs he has to do. He's always finishing with a cigar. We've seen it in two episodes so far. Um, so I like that element of it, but the relationship with Vic starts because he feels bad for this kid and you see it in the interaction he has with Renzi Feliz's character. Um, and he's because he has a handicap of a stutter and it sort of makes, uh, Oz feel for the kid. And now he's trying to be like, you know, I, I believed in you kid. Like I'm the one that's going to get you to where you need to be. And you're seeing the relationship develop between the two of them. What are your thoughts on that relationship so far? And are you enjoying? Because for me, I think it's showing a human side of him that is just going to get turned on its head by the end of the series. Yeah. I, for me, what's I, I do like that element of, of empathy from a, such a villainous character. Literally, the scene prior to that, him m- murdering a man... Uh, just out of pure spite and uh, then he you know so I love that duality between this kind of psychopathic and empathetic side of Oz and I, I, I am enjoying their relationship but what fascinates me more is the potential of Vic's character you know he is you just kind of assume he's a random kid and he he's very scared in that first episode while he's helping him, you know, take care of Alberto's body. But at the end of the first episode, boom, like that, he sets up the whole car rig with the payback and they chat over some slushies about the whole uh, process of that. Uh, but I, I was like, wow, hold on. That's like, you know, although Vic said that he couldn't, he couldn't really get the job fully done. He couldn't decapitate the body and then with the ear and whatnot, but it's still like shocking of like that kid did that. Yeah. So I'm more fascinated uh, and more excited on the potential of, of his character by the end of the series. Uh, but I do love that empathetic, relationship that they're building yeah and i agree with what you were just saying too which i'm glad you brought it up because i kind of forgot about it at the end of the show at the end of the episode i should say oz is talking to him about it and it's not only the fact that he couldn't decapitate him but he mm. goes i thought this would be a better reason to do it this way mm. so he's already thinking about thinking as a member of a crime syndicate mm. which is so unique um and i think this i've never seen this performer before renzi feliz is his name i think mm. he's done a great job um especially acting opposite colin farrell who again like we've if we haven't exuded it enough like this dude is unbelievable in this show and for the people who might be unaware i mean this guy did four hours of makeup and prosthetic every single day to do this every single time that they would yell cut he would have to go into a tent and in between takes he would literally cool his body down because his temperature would go up half a degree every every five minutes that he would film Hmm. and He's, he said immediately after, he's like, I never want to go in this suit again, but I feel like there's an Emmy nomination in his future, even two episodes in, where it yeah. you know, might change his mind. And who knows? We don't even know what's going to happen with Oz by the end of the series if his character is going to continue on in Batman Part 2 or something like that. But um, I agree with what, everything you've said about the relationship with him and Vic. Um, the relationship with him and Francis, his mother, is also so great. And I do love that he's still trying to impress this person and reassure this person that he wants to, I mean, I just love the interaction between them in the first episode where she's like, you're my boy, you're going to do everything you need to do. And he's like, yes, mommy, I got it. Like it's just, and it reminds me so much again of Sopranos where like Tony's just wanting this validation and this love from his mother that he's never going to receive. And I think it's a deeper relationship between Francis and Oz and this Deirdre O'Connor um i think it's deirdre Deirdre o'connor i just want to get the name right because she's she's great through two episodes of the show deirdre Mm -hmm. o'connell um just seeing that relationship and then you get a little bit in episode two of his relationship with eve the prostitute played by carmen ajoko like there's just so many moments through two episodes of the show that i could already call back to where i'm like this is a great character moment this is a great character moment this is a great character moment that I'm just on for the ride, man. Like I'm so excited to see where they go with this show. And mm. 
it's been probably besides Shogun, like my favorite week to week that I've watched in so long. Like House of the Dragon, we covered. I think season two was kind of a big disappointment. Mm. Um, season one was good, but this is like the viewership's already grown in one week. I mean, it's slow, but I think like we it went from like nine million viewers, nine point one million viewers week one to ten point nine week two. Like you're already getting 2 million new viewers for this show. Yeah. That is about a, a secondary Batman villain. Like, mm. I mean, people know who the penguin is, but it's not, he's the most known villain yeah. in Batman. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So I don't know, dude, I'm, I'm really, I'm really enjoying this show. I wasn't sure if there was anything else you wanted to cover in the two episodes. No, you, you put it best. I second everything you said. I, I'm, I'm excited as hell to see more of this. I just like, like mentioned at the beginning of the review, I love Reeves's universe. I want more of this. I want more and more and more. I want more Penguin. I want more. Uh, eventually, we're going to get Batman Part 2, and we'll see if we'll get Batman Part 3. Uh, but yeah, I second everything you said. I think there's so many great moments uh, already in these two episodes. I just, uh, I'm hoping there, I mean, thus far, I have very optimistic, but uh yeah, I'm just hoping that they they keep this momentum going. Yeah, you know, for the rest of the six episodes to come. A hundred percent. The last thing I'll say before we we um we sign off is that the my, something else that I just really love about Oz's character is the fact that he's constantly playing this this balancing act of everybody else around him thinking of him as expendable and malleable. Hmm and he's always one step ahead and if he's not one step ahead he's getting by with the skin of his teeth but he just he understands the end goal of where he wants to be Mm. and i think that's so interesting and so unique and i like i've never been a huge fan of of two faces a character um i like aaron eckhart's portrayal is fine i like when when uh harvey eventually turns a lot more than the character in the beginning but like, I want to see a world in which a Harvey Dent exists in this world yeah. and is interacting with Oz as the head of a crime syndicate. Like, I want to see those interactions now. Yeah, no, I I a hundred percent agree. I mean, there's so many like, don't get me wrong. There's like at the beginning of the review, uh, I, I mentioned how. They're probably going to cover the fantastical characters of the Batman universe in Brave and the Bold and whatever's to come of Gunn's universe. But there also are so many grounded Batman characters. Even we've seen Catwoman, uh, Harvey Dent, like... uh, Scarecrow. Scarecrow, yeah. yeah, Like, there's countless. There's countless. Um, Yeah, I I, I wish the same. Last thing. Hmm. Do There's a prediction. Yeah. Do we see any other characters from the Batman in this series by the end of it? Well, the, if they're not doing Batman himself, my two top picks uh, is Jim Gordon. And because, I mean, I don't know. It just makes sense. Like, I, I feel like. I feel like they almost need to have a Jim Gordon cameo. Like mm. this is all like we're dealing with criminal, 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 crime, crime, crime. The police have to show up eventually. Yeah. Um. And then I was also thinking because Catwoman, because it's revealed that Catwoman is um the daughter of Carmine Falcone. And we're now following uh the rest of the Falcones here. So I know that she went away at the end of the Batman but to see her interaction with Sophia Falcone would be, It'd be awesome. So yeah, it'd be crazy. It'd be so I don't know if Zoe Kravitz is going to return or not, but I would really love that. I would love that interaction to see. So I think they're both great predictions. Also, I have, actually I have one more thing. Yes. Uh, Gotham canonically takes place in New Jersey. So, Oh yes. Out, yeah. We didn't cover that. Shout out New Jersey. You yeah. guys didn't already know that we're from Jersey and we love talking about it, but yes, yeah. it's just so cool to <laughs> yeah. see that on screen. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Yes. It makes sense. I was going to say the whole Dark Knight trilogy filmed in New yeah. Jersey. So, but anyway, that has been our coverage, our recaps and our thoughts and review on the first two episodes of the Penguin on HBO. If you guys are not watching this show, what are you doing? You guys have to go on max. You have to be sitting down in front of your TV screens on Sunday nights 
watching it with your loved ones, with your family. This is like great appointment viewing again. Uh, Vinny and I are loving it so far, and we'll continue to cover it throughout the week. So hopefully we can get Zach on here on an episode soon to discuss what he thinks about it because I'd love to hear his thoughts, and we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. So let us know what you guys think about the first two episodes of The Penguin. Let's get a discussion going. Also, if you guys can, give this video a like, share it with your friends, share it with your family, and subscribe to us. We are the Culture Wave Media Network. Um, we cover all things film and TV. We also are doing interviews with a lot of indie filmmakers upcoming and covering other film festivals and stuff. So be on the lookout for that. And, uh, if you're just a fan of cinema, then we're, we're the channel for you guys and, and culture. So we appreciate you guys spending some time with us. You could also follow us on our social media stuff. That's all going to be below me in this video and in the description below. Just signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. And I'm Vinny Albano. And we'll see you guys next time. This is the culture.